Right now on 12 at 12, roll up your sleeves, Arizonans. The first shipment of Pfizer's COVID vaccine has arrived in our state. What you need to know about the big rollout. Plus holiday shipping, how soon you need to make sure your packages are in the mail so they make it in time for the holidays. And if you plan on having a real Christmas tree this year, while well, you might want to grab one sooner than later. 12 at 12 starts right now. 12 minutes, no commercials. We're live on TV and on the go on the 12 News app, Facebook, and YouTube. Hey guys, it's Tram here. Let's get straight to our big story happening at noon. The moment we have all been waiting for is finally here. Maricopa County officials say the first shipment of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine has arrived here in Arizona. The Maricopa County Health Department posted this photo, saying they're excited and the countdown to dispensing is on. This critical care nurse in New York City made history this morning. She was among the first person in the U.S. to get Pfizer's COVID vaccine. She says it didn't feel any different than any other vaccine. This comes as more Arizonans test positive for the coronavirus, a big spike in new infections. The Department of Health Services reported more than 11,000 new cases today, along with one new death. So let's give those numbers some context. The two big spikes you see on this graph were due to a delay in reporting, but even after taking out both of those outliers, you can see cases have been trending upward. But again, some good news with Pfizer's COVID vaccine arriving in Arizona. Team 12's Jen Wall shows us what our state has planned for the big rollout. Yeah, and keep in mind, we are getting frequent updates about the massive vaccine rollout plan right here in Arizona. And places like Fry's are one of the spots you could expect to have access to the COVID-19 vaccine here in the future. Maricopa County Public Health says they expect to get the first batch of vaccines tomorrow. There are plans to start vaccinating healthcare workers at select spots as early as the 17th of this week. Now, during the first phase of the vaccination, Maricopa County is working working with ADHS to give it to critical populations. The first priority groups are healthcare workers and long term care facility staff and residents. Some of the next priority groups on the list to be vaccinated are teachers, child care workers, law enforcement and a couple of others. Then adults over the age of 65 and adults of any age with underlying health conditions, putting them at greater risk of getting really sick. The general public can expect to start getting the vaccine as early as spring of 2021 into the summer. The FDA authorized the first COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use in the U.S. late last week. This vaccine met the FDA's rigorous standards for quality, safety and efficacy. The expectation is in the next several months that there'll be enough supply of vaccines to vaccinate 100 million uh, uh, Americans. And when the vaccine is more widely available, you can expect to get it at traditional places like doctors, offices, health clinics and pharmacies. And there may even be those larger scale vaccine events. Stay with 12 News for updates here. For now, we're in Mesa. Jen Wall, 12 News. Jen, thank you. As millions of people prepare to roll up their sleeves, many are asking what does the vaccine do and are there any side effects? ER physician and former Baltimore Health Commissioner Dr. Leanna Wen says the vaccine reduces severe illness and symptomatic illness, but it hasn't shown to reduce the transmission or spread of the coronavirus. She adds that side effects of the vaccine are normal and show it's working. There are two general types of side effects. One is pain, swelling, redness at the injection site itself. And then the other is kind of flu-like symptoms, body aches, fevers, headache, fatigue. Now the vaccines haven't been tested on kids, pregnant or breastfeeding moms, anyone who has problems with their immune systems or certain allergies. The hope is that by the time those people are ready to be vaccinated, at least some preliminary data will be available. Happening today, electors across the country will meet to cast the final votes for the 2020 election. Here in Arizona, our state electors met to confirm President-elect Joe Biden's win in our state this morning, awarding him Arizona's 11 electoral college votes. State law requires electors to vote on the candidate who won Arizona's popular vote. He's expected to win 306 votes to President Trump's 232. Well, coming off a beautiful, chilly and breezy weekend, what can we expect today? Here's Crystal with your forecast 411. 
12 News weather watcher Dustin was lucky enough to capture this beauty of a shooting star as it streaked across the night sky during the peak of the Geminids. Now for others, the view was spoiled by the clouds, but those clouds that have been anchored overhead most of the day are going to skedaddle in time for tonight's encore performance. I'm giving you the green telescope across Arizona as we kiss goodbye the clouds and say hello to the dazzling night sky. But boy, are you going to be hugging your coat tightly? It'll be 20 degrees at midnight in northern Arizona, 46 in the valley, 44 in southern Arizona. We're still hanging on to that new moon or just a little bit of a sliver of a moon, which is going to make the night sky extra dark. Perfect for viewing the Geminids, which are still dazzling out there at more than 50 meteors an hour. They're going to be active through December 20th. Then mark your calendar for next week. We've got Jupiter and Saturn coming in close in appearance in the night sky, putting on a spectacular performance known as the Great Conjunction. That's going to come around on the winter solstice and we'll also be treated to our final shooting star show of the year during that time. Boy, oh boy, temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock tonight. Be ready for them. We're all slipping into the 30s here. Even Phoenix has the potential to reach the lowest level so far this season. The East Valley could be waking up to that freezing mark. We're going to take it down into the teens and single digits up north tonight. And when you're starting off from scratch like that, below average temperatures are going to follow suit in the afternoon throughout the first half of the work week. We've got clouds today. Those are going to disappear by tomorrow and the winds will also simmer down by tomorrow too. Woo, it is cold. All right, Crystal, thank you. If you plan on getting a real Christmas tree this year, you might have a hard time finding one. That's because there's a Christmas tree shortage and the pandemic shares only some of the blame. Let's connect the dots. If you are planning to have a real Christmas tree this year, you might want to grab one sooner than later. Sellers are reporting a shortage this year. Let's connect the dots. Coronavirus does play a role in this year's Christmas tree shortage, but this problem has been growing for years. It originated during the 2008 financial crisis. Because of money troubles, many Christmas tree growers were forced to cut back on how much they planted or cancel expansion plans. Since it takes a while for a tree to grow, that continues to have an impact on supply. Then there is the ongoing pandemic. Whether it's a nostalgia for a house smelling of a pine needles or the canceled travel plans, Christmas tree sellers report an increase in demand for real trees. The National Christmas Tree Association reports they received an unprecedented number of calls this fall from people wanting to know when the Christmas tree farms would open up. Also, in some areas, coronavirus restrictions are forcing lots to limit hours or stay closed. The weather hasn't helped either. From the raging wildfires out west to drought conditions in large parts of the country, some growers are struggling. Despite all that, you should still be able to find a tree, but selection may be limited and you might have to check more than one seller. Connecting the dots, I'm Cheryl Mercedes, Okay, what's up with the pink and purple Christmas trees? I have not seen that before. Well, Christmas is right around the corner, and if you want your packages to make it in on time for the holidays, there are a few shipping deadlines that you need to know about. First up, for USPS, retail ground packages must be sent by tomorrow. You can still ship on other dates, but they're just going to be more expensive. The first class shipping deadline is this Friday, and priority shipping is Saturday. Priority Mail Express needs to be mailed by Wednesday, December 23rd. UPS has its first shipping deadline tomorrow as well, along with other shipping options leading up until overnight shipping the day before Christmas Eve. And last but not least, FedEx. They also have their first shipping deadline tomorrow. Their shipping dates are similar to UPS, but their dates could change as we inch closer to the holidays. FedEx says it's super important to check their website regularly for updates. Hey, speaking of sending stuff, we are sending the love to you with the help of our sponsors. And you can win all sorts of great prizes. Go to 12news.com slash contest for all the info to enter. Good luck, everyone. Well, it's a happy Monday for Cardinals fans. Finally, that three-game losing streak is over. The Redbirds are now back on track after taking care of business in New Jersey, beating the Giants 26-7 on Sunday. To Murray, backing up in trouble, throws it back in the end zone. Arnold jumps up into the air and catches it for a touchdown. 
Yesterday's victory vaults the cards into the third wild card spot in the NFC with a seven to six, excuse me, seven and six record. The University of Arizona is looking for a new football coach. They fired Kevin Sumlin after Saturday's Territorial Cup where ASU beat the Wildcats a whopping 70 to seven. U of A has lost 12 games straight, which is the worst losing streak in the program's history. Sadly, the team won't get another chance to snap that losing streak this season. Their game against Cal has been canceled. Both teams don't have enough players to play. Well, it's time now for in other news, the stories that you may see trending on social media today. The Cleveland Indians are changing their name after 105 years. The team is moving away from a name considered racist for decades. The New York Times broke the news late last night and said the team could pick another name later this week. Cleveland's move follows a similar decision earlier this year by the NFL's Washington football team, previously known as the Redskins. Coronavirus vaccines are here to help curb the spread, but where there's hope, there is doubt. TikTok now coming to the rescue in a way only it can. Is that okay? Oh my goodness. Vaccine researchers in the UK are using TikTok to answer questions for people who are just not sure about getting the vaccine. Health experts say at least 70% of people will need to get the vaccine to achieve herd immunity. In the UK, those who said they would definitely get a COVID-19 vaccine dropped from about 63% to 54% after seeing misinformation online. Researchers say they're making these videos to give people the info they don't have access to. And that's your 12 at 12, the facts on everything you need to know in just 12 minutes, no commercials. We're always on anywhere, anytime on 12news.com, our 12 News app that's free, and our social media channels as well. We hope you make it a wonderful day, everyone. I'll see you back here for 12 News First at 4.